All right, so uh, so we kind of left off with this talk about like deterrence theory in terms of uh, we know what it is, but due to when it's created, um, you know, it's really not something that's really equipped to ha answer correlates of crime. It's not really equipped to answer uh, questions about, um, you know, like really what makes a good or bad theory. And it focuses a lot on government intervention and how you can prevent crime, right? So it's not really, again, it doesn't really ask people, um, you know, how do we, how do you, uh, like, why do people commit crime or develop any policy that way? It's simply trying to understand, um, you know, what is uh, something that you need to do in order to create a punishment so severe that people do not commit crime, right? So again, ask a very different fundamental question than that. So as we kind of like talked about earlier, uh, you know, this is something that leaves the theory incomplete, right? And we think, talk about all these other, other theories in a way they're sort of answering uh, the uh, response from uh, like deterrence theory, right? So everything is sort of an extension, sort of built on that. And within this framework, uh, there one clear extension um, that comes in is this idea that we should focus more on like what the offender is, what they're thinking, and uh, maybe like analyze like what makes someone uh, make the decision ultimately to commit crime. So rather than focusing on why people don't commit crime, uh, why do uh, why do they choose to do it when they know about like a possible threat, right? Because the truth is like a lot of people are aware that you can like get in trouble for committing crime. They're aware that there are probably some consequences that they you know don't want to take place. They're aware that you know you, these are things that you shouldn't be doing, right? Yet people still do them anyway. And so uh, the next theory that we'll talk about, rational choice theory, attempts to get into that sort of like perceptual process of what's going on, right? So in, a, in the nutshell of the theory itself, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later, rational choice theory, again, assumes that people uh, prefer pleasure over pain and sort of makes this assumption that people, uh, you know, take in or taking in information, right? So there's information about the world. You know that you have, you know, a family to take care of. You know about like relative risk of uh, police officers, right? You know that there are, you know, instances and occurrences that you like factor in, right? Now, the result, you're processing this information, right? So you're taking it, you're taking it in, and you see it completely, right? So rational choice theory kind of assumes that people make uh, optimal decisions um, with full information. And when they have full information, they're able to uh, you know, make the best decision, right? So with, uh, with respect to committing crime then, people are sort of doing, engaged in like this cost benefit of analysis, right? So people come in and they're like, you know, I'd really like, like for example, you guys ever have those moments where like you hear something it may not be something like you ever heard like in years um, or even thought about and then you hear it and you're like, oh man, that's, that's really good. Uh, for me, two things recently, I don't know what it was. I haven't had a Sprite in years, um, but then like I heard someone mention having a Sprite and I was like, that sounds really good. I'd really like that. And then to top it all off, uh, someone like I heard it something about Skittles, a, a candy I could totally forget about. You know, like I don't know why because I used to like kind of like Skittles, especially the sour or the wild berry kind. Mm, so good. But in my head, right, like all these like memories and nostalgia started picking up because I remember like as a kid when I lived in Washington State. You know, I used to really love Sprite and Skittles, um, like a winning combination, right? Um, I think at one point I put. Skittles in uh, my Sprite or something for like fruity or something. Was that like a thing? Because there used to be like wild berry Sprite or something like that. I can't really remember. Point being though, is that I make this decision process where I'm like, man, do I really want to get Skittles? Do I really want to get, um, you know, a Sprite to enjoy myself, right? So in my head, I'm weighing out like the perks of this, right? So I know that there's going to be, um, you know, like, we get the Skittles, it's gonna taste really good, especially like the grape and, uh, and strawberry ones. I thought those were cherry, but they're strawberry. Uh, maybe like uh, like the lemon or uh, the lime. Actually, it turns out the, like, the green ones aren't lime, they're green apple. I learned this last night, so I was, I was very flustered. But in my head though, before I made this decision, like, do I really wanna to go to Sprite? I was like, oh, well, you know, I don't wanna drive there. I'd have to walk to the gas station. 
that walk's gonna be about a mile. Do I really want to do that, right? And so in it, right, as I'm weighing like the relative uh, benefit of getting uh, like some Skittles versus getting a Sprite, right? So I'm making this decision in my head. So like, what are these benefits, right? What are the possible costs that are coming to place? You know, it was also dark at night. Um, I'd have to walk by this like creepy old house that hangs a Confederate flag sometimes at night, um, which is true. There is like someone in my neighborhood who hangs a Confederate flag like half the time. It doesn't do it during the day, but like once like the light comes down, you know, like you'll see that rebel flag flying. I'm like, dude, I live in like, like uh, we live in California. What the hell are you doing with a Confederate flag? It doesn't make any sense to me. So I have to walk by that guy. I've seen him. He's creepy. Is he going to say something to me if I like look too much at this Confederate flag because it's really out of place and like should not be hung uh, ever? Um, so I, all this goes into place, but ultimately I make this decision in my head that I weigh where I weigh the pros and cons of an action, and then I decide yes, I'm going to do something or no, I'm not. What ends up happening with this kind of perceptual process, right, is that I am like mentally processing information, right. And I'm making a decision based off of available information. Now, the thing is, right, uh, a few things that we know about uh, humans, right, is that, you know, we aren't really good at processing information, right? We're not, we can't do it perfectly. We, and we do it imperfectly. We have our own biases. We have our own ways of thinking about things that vary from one another. We also know that um, optimal decisions are made with more to sit with more information um, but if, if we're missing some sort of information we tend to make poor decisions because it's not complete right so what this means is that uh, that could explain why some people do commit crime because they're not processing all available information or they're not considering everything or they don't have access to all information and perhaps that's why uh, crime occurs right so we'll talk a little bit more about this, uh, like drawing it out, sketching it, just for view, but um, just know that we talk about rational choice theory. We know we're weighing the pros and cons of doing an action before deciding to do it. And so with respect to crime, then people are weighing the pros and cons of committing crime and then um, choosing to or not to uh, decide to uh, commit crime. So I'll see you guys uh, drawing out in the next video.